Hello and welcome to a butchered attempt for me to try and explain what is known as quick tap via wall charge. The concept is by exploiting the nest tetris um, mechanics in a way that allows you to effectively quick tap pieces over to the left hand side without losing das. I have a few videos that I like to show to represent all the pieces that are possible using this theory and at the end I'll show two um, ambitious propositions. We'll start by doing the eyepiece as that is the easiest to explain and the concept is that when you've built out your left at 8 high, as I did right there, as I pause you will notice that after this technique I do not lose das on the next piece. Let me do it frame by frame as to show you what I mean. What I do is with the next long bar, I simply das left without even rotating it. Then as soon as the long bar hits the left hand side of the wall, look at the input display, I wall charge it and at the same time rotate the piece. The game will then consider this as a wall charge and give you full das. Then just keep on holding left and the piece will go to the left at an 8 high stack. Now there is one very big problem with this technique and is that on an 8 high stack this technique is frame perfect which means that any, there is no margin of error at all and if you do any mistakes this will not work. Whereas if you just do the traditional method, which is by rotating the piece immediately and then try and quick tap, tap over to the left hand side using the traditional method, while you will lose DAS in the process, you actually have two frames to hit it. And as you notice, I am able to get the T-piece and the long bar to the right hand side because I had partial charge on the T-piece. That is the concept for the long bar, and it also works for certain other pieces, as I will show you. I have built out the second column at an 8 high, and you will notice something very, very interesting. Let me go back a little bit, and pause right at this, bit, this area, and do it again frame by frame you'll notice the J hits the wall and then one frame later you let go and then hit it again to represent a wall charge and rotate it at the same time. The game will see this as a wall charge and then one frame later the J will go over to the left hand side. Now there is one thing to consider and it is entirely possible for you to then wall charge instead on the right hand side by simply doing the opposite, by doing a right and then noticing the OPC then do a left again. This is something that some players may consider is better and it is up to you to decide whether you want to do that or not. However, with this method you only need to consider pressing the left and you don't need to worry about the right hand side at all. And as such, because of that, because of the JPs has to fall down two more blocks, you then have enough DAS to get the square over on a 9 high left which is the maximum possible, even if you had full DAS, as you can see. Now let me show you something that will not actually work, and that is the S piece. The S piece is actually one exception that will not work with this technique, and I can show you why. As you can see, I have built out the left 8 high. And you'll notice that I hit 8 high, but you'll notice a big problem, which is this hot little hole right here. Although I keep DAS, you'll, no you'll know that there is one big problem with this. And let me do it frame by frame this time round. Again, with the concept, the piece hits the wall, 
one frame later I let go, and one frame later I hit left and rotate. And you immediately see the problem here, which is that there is, that there is no conceivable circumstance where you will put this F on the left hand side on an eight high using this method. Because at all circumstances you will end up creating a hole right here. The only way in which you can get an S to an eight high left is by doing the old traditional method if you have a lip available. Because you don't need to worry about this little space because you just rotate it first hand. Let me try and show you here. There you go. This is occupied by here, which means that if you do the old method of just quick tapping immediately, this would not be occupied by this. Instead, I'll show you what will work, and, and unfortunately that is a 7 high. There you go. And as you can see with the next piece, I get to keep Das. And this is one instance actually where there is actually no possibilities to get a wall charge over on the right hand side. However, with this method, you still get to keep Das and as such, the O will go to the right hand side. Let me do it frame by frame. As you notice, the column one is eight high, which means that S piece is now reached the left hand side so I have to let go for one frame which means that this S is hitting this stack then one frame later hit left rotate I'll get a wall charge and just hold left and the S will go on to the left hand side all right now I can show you the rest of the pieces the L piece And let me do it frame by frame to show you. Now it is important to notice that in this case for the L piece, your third column can also only be eight high. If you use, um, Actually, no, ignore me. Even if you use the old method, the FOD column can also only be 8 high. So this is something to consider if you want to quick tap an L over to the left-hand side. But in this instance, as you can see, I get to at least keep DAS. And my center is very high. But with the next piece being the long bar, I can put it over to the right-hand side. No problem, just about. If I was using the old traditional method, this L would have lost me DAS, and there was, as a result, I would have topped up because the longbow would not have been able to, to go over to the right hand side. Now we're on to the T piece. And frame by frame. Now, the T piece is another instance where it is possible to get a wall charge by doing the right hand side in here. However, this is even tighter than the J piece. Uh, while some players may consider this to be better, it is up to you to decide whether you want to do this method or the traditional method. And finally, we have the Z piece.
and fi finally slow down. Once again, just das left. One frame later, let go. Next frame, rotate, and then because I have full das on the next frame, it'll hit eight high. And I get to keep DAS. All right. One last thing that I want to show is a potential very ambitious prospect, which is to get a nine high eye on the left hand side. And this is dependent where you believe whether a double quick tap is just a tap maneuver or whether it is something that a DAS player can do. I believe it is just a tap maneuver, but nonetheless, I do think this warrants at least a little bit of attention. So I will do so nonetheless. This is doing so using what would be the traditional method of just rotating it immediately and then just doing a traditional double quick tap. Let me do it frame by frame. Oops, I did a little bit too quickly. That's my fault. All right, so in this instance, the piece moves, and then I let go, hit again for a first quick tap, and then three frames later, do it again. It is up to you to decide whether that is viable for a DAS player or not. And then finally, the proposition using the wall charge theory is by doing it like this. You'll notice some janky maneuvers. This is because I was doing an emulator and therefore I am able to do inputs frame by frame. So that is one thing to consider. Let me show that again in full speed. And then finally, doing it frame by frame, what I do is das left. Then as soon as it hits the wall, let go for one frame do the method of left plus rotate, keep on holding left, and then three frames later, tap again. Again, it is up to you to decide whether that is viable or not. I don't think it might be viable, but again, I think this warrants some potential, some uh, attention to see whether this might be viable sometime in the future. Or alternatively, you can just tap. All right, I have showed up all the examples and that is everything that I want to show. So if you're here this far, thank you so much for watching and I bid you all a very nice day.